The purpose of this video is to design the perfect flying wing airplane. So we start with the wing. Now we have to build the plane around it. And to build the plane basically means that you have to choose the place for your center of gravity. So we can put it somewhere inside of this wing, maybe close to the nose, as people usually do. Maybe we should put it outside, maybe on the top. Uh, on the top of this wing, maybe on the bottom. It is hard to say. So we have to come to the uh, best position for the center of gravity. And the best position is actually the position uh, at which you have zero net moment acting on this uh, plane. So if you look at the place where the center of gravity is, we have to have zero moment acting on it. So this is the goal for us, to pick the point at which we have zero moment. And also it would be nice to have this moment uh, equal to zero at different angles of attack. And you still have the net zero moment acting on the center of gravity. So this is the goal and uh, this is what we're going to do. And now let's choose the position for the center of gravity. Uh, so I feel lucky, I think this is the point. Uh, let's check what is the moment uh, in, in this point. So we have to compute the moment. And to do that we have to draw a line. So uh, we use those equations. So uh, first, uh, at this airfoil we have distribution of uh, pressure. So this distribution we can get from X-foil. So from X-foil you can get those graphs. So you know the pressure acting on each element of this airfoil. So you know pressure everywhere. And then uh, it means that we can put our vector close to each element on this airfoil. So small section of this airfoil and we have the force, uh, the pressure in this uh, point. So the, the small moment which is actually produced by this element is uh, equal to this uh, radius and the cross product of this radius is, is the force which is which acts on the element and the force itself is uh, basically the pressure multi multiplied by the element length and uh, actual normal to the surface so here's the equation for elementary, elementary force and here's the element, uh, elementary moment which is caused by this force and this uh, ra radius vector you know those equations and then you take the vector product for radius and the elementary force and then what you do you uh, actually do it for all the small elements and you sum them up so you're going to have uh, the total momentum from this uh, airfoil which you can uh, observe at this point so the momentum can be positive or negative uh, can be directed to the screen or outside of the screen so you do it and at this point you're going to have the result and we assume that this point was not the right point so we we can do the same the same calculation for some other point so what we can do we can uh, basically repeat our steps for all the points that we have uh, on this plane and compute the moment for all the planes that we have uh, for all the points that we have on this plane so we're going to write a small python script which is going to do computation for us and as a result we only see the, the number the number the moment number at each position of this uh, two dimensional two dimensional space i have talked about this subject in more details in my previous video a long and boring video and highly misunderstood but in this uh, video I just talk about shortly the results. So here's the graphs for the uh, elementary moments on the airfoil. So each element of airfoil has elementary moment in the points of, of, of our interest. So we compute those elementary moments and then what we do is sum all of those uh, elementary moments and get uh, the moment, the total moment for this airfoil at the given uh, position. So once this is done, we can compute the total moment for different locations. So here is the beautiful graph for the total moment. And uh, the script, what it does, it computes the moment in each position along the line, along the, along the horizontal line. Uh, so on this axis we have the moment. 
moment value and uh, we can note that uh, we have few interest, interesting uh, areas in, in this graph. So the first, gra the first area is actually where the moment is equal to zero. So this uh, uh, range is called center of pressure. So as we can see, the center of pressure is different for different angles of attack. So the angle of, so angle of attack alpha equal to one degree is, is in blue color. Moving to the angle of attack alpha equal to seven degrees, uh, the red color, and we see that the moment is moving from the blue to the red position, uh, closer to the nose as we increase uh, angle of attack. Also, we can note that uh, the quarter length of the cord is located somewhere in between. So here's the quarter length of the cord, uh, x025, it's here, this position. And uh, at this posi position, we have the alpha, uh, we have the total moment equal to zero at alpha equivalent to five degrees. So the, it makes sense when they compute the moment at this position. Okay, <coughs> so this is simple and uh, this is usual graph. Ah, yes. So the second point is the aerodynamical center or aerodynamical focal point. So it's located here, a bit in front of the nose. It's also a good point to know, and it's very useful too. So <coughs> this 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 is all known, and uh, let's look at something else. Let's uh, plot uh, the line below this one. So we're going to see what actually the moments are if you if you plot them not along the cord line, but somewhere below the the airfoil. So let's put the negative minus zero three. So now airfoil is about about this this line at which we're computing the moments. So what we can see that uh, the mom the moment that uh, the zero moment actually the, the range with the zero moments are located now a bit uh, on the right side and now the behavior of alpha is different. Uh, behavior of the moment with respect to the alpha is different. Now we see that uh, it moves closer to the tail when we increase the, the angle of attack which is uh, opposite from what we have seen in the previous uh, graph. So we have the aerodynamic focus or aerodynamic center behind those points. Okay, so and now let's look at some other line, maybe the line above this airfoil. So we're going to put the plus sign and compute the results and here is the results. Now the airfoil is below and we still have the zero moments. So moment is zero. So the, the range is here. Uh, and have the similar behavior as we have seen uh, on the first graph. So when we increase the alpha and go for attack, the moment uh, the, ce the central pressure point moves close to the nose. And aerodynamic pressure we cannot see it because it's somewhere here, somewhere in this, uh, this position, far on the left side, top left side. Okay, so this is the way how the code works. And now what you can do, you can plot those lines at every position along the y-axis and see what are actually the moments are. And then you can choose the sweet point, point that you would like to use. And uh, we probably jump to conclusions and just uh, put the graphs on the same picture and then you will see actually the difference between those graphs. Once we have the Python code, we are ready to compute the moment at any place on this two-dimensional plane. So we're going to compute moment everywhere. But uh, to make it more easy for for the computer, let's compute the moments along the lines. So we have the first line going about the airfoil. The second line crossing the airfoil goes through the cord line. Then we have the line below the airfoil and so on. So we, we can compute this moment at many lines and then see actually what's going to happen. So the first thing is uh, to define the condition that we wish. And the first condition is to make this airplane uh, flyable. So meaning that uh, if we have uh, the, the center of gravity somewhere placed, at this center of gravity we have to have zero, uh, acting zero moment. So there is no moment at the center of gravity. In that case, plane is in the stable condition. So the zero moment is the must be condition. And uh, let's make it more complex because as we have seen, you usually do have center of pressure points on the airfoil cord and so on. So let's make it more complex and let, let's fulfill the second condition simultaneously. So the second condition is for the moment to be stable. So the moment is stable with respect to the alpha. If we are going to change the alpha, the moment will stay the same. In our case, uh, it's going to be zero. 
So it's going to be zero moment at any alpha. So th those two conditions, we try to find a point on this plane. Maybe we can do it, maybe we cannot. But let's let's go have a look. So the, the first graph is shown here. At this moment we have the line over which we compute the moments above the airfoil. And uh, we do have center of pressure points. So here is the moment equal to zero. And uh, aerodynamic focus or the aerodynamic center is somewhere there on the top left. So it's the condition is not fulfilled, only one part of it. So let's take a look at the second graph. At this moment the line at which we compute the moments goes through the cord of this airfoil. And once again we have the points called uh, central pressure points. And those points are located on the quarter of the cord position from the leading edge of the airfoil. Uh, have seen this before as well. And the picture and the point for the aerodynamical center is again on the top left position. So the third condition is not met. Let's go down and now let's draw a line below the airfoil. And tada we have a jackpot. So here's the point. At this point we have the moment equal to zero. So moment is equal to zero, zero point. And we also have uh, a dynamic center so that this change of alpha, so the different color, the lines with different color goes through this point, but the moment is zero for all of them. So you can change this airfoil to any angle of attack and you will still have zero moment. So this is a beautiful point. And we're going to place the center of gravity here. And now we have the airplane. So the airplane is, is perfect because it's stable, it's rock stable. So the moment is zero, nothing is acting on this uh, center of gravity point at this moment. And if you change angle of attack, uh, it's not going to change anything. So the moment is still zero. So the plane is going to be stable at any angle of attack. So here is the sweet spot we uh, were looking for. And on the whole space, I think this is probably the only point. And if we, will, let's say, go a bit down, so the, in that case, uh, once again, we have the central pressure points present, but the the aerodynamic center is uh, down below on the right side. So here is the spot and here is the, the plane. So let's look at uh, this beautiful plane uh, a bit more in details. So why this plane is perfect? The first reason uh, is that this airplane is highly aerodynamically efficient. So it does not have any silly tails, which are actually the source of the extra drag. And if you compare this plane, for instance, with the classical design, like like this one so you see the difference so this plane has the usual wing and then you have the tail which has the opposite force and this force is needed to compensate the pitch down momentum and if you have the force you have the drag so you can look at this polar curve when uh, where the lift coefficient and the drag coefficients are connected so this is the source of the drag right away and then you can actually have even more silly design if you reduce the length uh, of this tail. Then you will adapt with this, not very smart airfoil. Uh, so this airfoil is used in flying wings and uh, it's called Re Reflex Airfoil or S-Profile Airfoil. So basically it combines two uh, wings, one is uh, the main wing and second one is the opposite. One, to compensate the pitching down momentum but you have very small leverage between those two so you have to have stronger force so the servo has to be stronger I can put it like this and this is actually a huge source of the drug so this, this, this the drug crea creator so you can call it this airfoil and then you have this plane uh, even less efficient than uh, the classical design the second advantage is that this uh, wing is going to be very simple you can pick any airfoil you wish, you can pick the best airfoil from the database. You don't really care about the reflex airfoils or S profiles and so on. Pick the best. And then the wing itself is very simple. It's as simple as the wing in airplanes, unusual airplane. So you can just uh, maybe use this wing if you want. Uh, and uh, this is incomparable with the flying wings design because in that case you have many problems. First, you have to basically you're desperately trying to uh, increase the leverage. So you're trying to increase the distance between those two forces, and uh, by doing so, you would like to maybe 
tilt the wing a bit back so that you're going to have a big distance be between the average force acting upwards and the force acting downwards on the back of the wing. Also, you might twist the tip of this wing so that you are going to have the default negative force uh, opposing the positive lifting force so that you can compensate the momentum in this plane. In other words, you have some problems with this design and it's a bit complex. Whereas in that case, you just have uh, a plank basically and you have a very simple simple wing. Okay, so what else? Uh, the control of this plane is also elegant and efficient. So to control this plane, you play with your center of uh, gravity. You place it at a different position. So if you move it slightly, you're going to create momentum. And this momentum is going to uh, turn the plane in the right direction so that you're going to have a higher, smaller angle of attack. So the control can be highly efficient in this plane and you don't have to use some silly surfaces like flaps for instance. Uh, they do produce uh, extra drag. So the drag you cannot see in your simulation. In your simulation you have perfect numbers and then you have to use uh, flaps and all those numbers are actually irrelevant. Do such airplanes exist? Well, I come up with this design from the first principles and I don't think you can beat the efficiency of this airplane. The efficiency of this airplane is basically equal to the efficiency of the airfoil or the wing. And there is not much of a plane except that. So you have no tails, nothing else, no control surfaces. So basically as efficient as the, as the wing itself. I was thinking that probably if this is the best plane ever designed, this beautiful system of control, maybe I should think about the patent application. But then after maybe a moment, after a few moments I come up with the realization that those planes actually do exist. So allow me to present you the best ever plane made to humans. Ta-da! Here is the paper plane. You can fold it from the paper and you have the center of gravity at the right place. And this plane is, you know, highly stable. So you can have a crappy airfoil, but this plane is stable and flying well. Surprise, surprise. And after a moment, I come up with the second idea that actually I have seen those planes before. Those are Delta planes. The person who is there can control the center of gravity with respect to the wing. So he can play with this thing back and forth and eventually he's going to have uh, the angle of attack he wishes. So those planes do exist. And I think that those planes are the most efficient airplanes ever designed. Definitely more efficient than this thing or that thing. So those are not efficient planes. But this one is definitely the, the winner. The most efficient airplane design is presented on this picture.